Hey, what's up, Black Paul Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 2011 book by Gordon Corman, Titanic, book one, Unsinkable. So this is a part of a, a three-part series. No, that's four. Three-part series, there we go. Um, Gordon Corman has make, writes a lot of books in regards to parts. So this is uh, his Titanic version. Part one is Unsinkable. Two is Collision Course. Three is SOS. So the first one's 170 pages. Um... I read this when this first came out back in the day and I remember loving it and I was like wow this is so wild because as a Titanic obsessed kid studying the hell out of everything of it um, reading more stories integrating fictitious plot lines alongside nonfiction actual people uh, as well as proper descriptions of you know passageways and staircases and, and decks etc right it's interesting. It's always been fascinating to me when you have uh, historical fiction, and this is a good example of historical fiction, and this really cool aspect of historical fiction in this particular franchise, series, if you will, this trilogy, is throwing in Jack the Ripper. So uh, you have Alfie, who's a 15-year-old steward. You're supposed to be 16 years old to work on the uh, White Star Line. But he lies because his dad, John Huggins, is, uh, is uh, one of the... Um, Black gang crew members or something like that. Black gang's the the, uh, the nickname term for the coal guys working in the boilers because they're just covered in black soot, head to toe. Um, so they're just called the black gang putting the coal into the boilers because there's 29 boilers uh, to get the ship going because it's a giant steamliner technically that debuted in 1912. So we start out a couple months before the April you know, venture uh, from Eng from from uh, Europe to um, America of the Titanic. And what I really love about this trilogy is that everything is timestamped. So each each um, chapter starts, it says what the day of the week is, what the date is, what the time is, and where are we, right? So we're in, we're in Belfast, we're in Southampton, we're in other places, and then on the RMS Titanic. So it gives all the timeline. It's Everything is timelined. I love it. I'm a sucker for a good timeline. We talked about timelines various times within regards to different projects and stories and film and TV series and books. And this is a good example that it's literally referenced what the time is, right? But it's important to in regards to the historical aspect. This is historical fiction. So you have these certain stewards, you have these certain lieutenants, you have these certain individuals who are aboard the Titanic doing their day-to-day or not doing the day-to-day, -day, uh, but spliced in with these fictitious characters. So Alfie Huggins is 15. You have Patty Burns, who's, uh, I think, 14? I think he's a year younger. Then you have uh, Julia, who's 15. You have Sophia, who I think is 14. They're all roughly 14, 15, the four of them. So all different walks of life all happen to be on the ship at the same time. One is a stowaway, one is a steward, one is a deportee, one is a high society girl from Glam, England, right? Her father is the 17th Lordship of Glam or something like that, Glamford. Um, so it's a matter of how do these four characters, what do these four characters do together on the ship? Um, will they turn Patty in? Will they help him escape these uh, Belfast gangsters that are trying to kill him? Patty thinks his best friend Daniel was killed by the, the gangsters, but then we find out that he was actually just brutally beaten and captured. And then Daniel, the best friend, now finds out that Patty's still alive, even though he thought he was dead. It was a lot of the back and forth. Is he dead? Is he not dead? Sad, sorrow, etc. Getting backstories in different walks of life. First class, second class, steerage, right? Very interesting having all of these different things. Um, it's, it's neat having that in a societal standpoint. How do you treat, w would you treat somebody differently because they're not in your class kind of a thing? Um, I just love the conversations that they all have. I love the adventures that they have as well. I love the description of running through the hallways and things of that nature, seeing the paneling, seeing the paint, uh, you know, feeling the plush carpeting, things like that. It's, it just brings a sense of realism to the ship. It's just wonderful. It's, it's a wonderful depiction, visualization, representation of that historical aspect thrown in with the fictitious storylines of these four particular characters, which I really like. So throwing in the mix of all of these things, because the Titanic obviously is fated to sink, what happens with these characters while the ship is sinking after the collision during an SOS moment, right? But 
Jack the Ripper is aboard the boat, right? Jack the Ripper went through England in the 1880s or something like that. So then 1890s, one of those one of those decades. And so he's never he was never caught, but then, you know, the kids find this book in the uh the teens find this book of memorabilia, if you will, in storage and um in the ship's storage area for passengers and they're like, well why would he why would this person have this unless they are this person so then it's a matter of what do you do do you try to track this person down do you then turn this person in if you turn this person in are you also conf confessing that alfie's 15 he should be 16 to work on the ship the fact that patty is technically a stowaway how does this work what do you say what do you not say i just really like how quick this book is i like the character development throughout the series in general and it's just wonderful within having that timeline timestamp of everything because you know what happens next, right? You know that it's going to sink, but what happens during this aspect? I talked about this uh, when we were talking about some other books, when I was just rattling off the books on my TBR list before I move into my next chunk of TBR list. And uh, I have four Titanic books to read, three of which are from Gordon Corman, the same story. And then the next one is after that. Um, it's called Deck Z, and it's about zombies on the Titanic that the Titanic was intentionally sunk because there was a zombie outbreak. And it's just, that's another wild thing. But it's just really cool having this wild historical fiction in regards to Jack the Ripper in this series and then zombie apocalypse for the Dexy historical fiction. I just love it. I love having that historical fiction aspect. I love that you can literally envision it, why the ship had to sink or, or how the ship had to sink what also could have been aboard while the ship was sinking. It's just, it's wild. Wild, wild, wild. May 2021, Gordon Corman's first book, one unsinkable of his Titanic series. On to the next review. Ultramalo.